You know, right now the world is very different than it was just a month ago. Like this is complete madness, especially in the United States, um, but other places in the world are also just really in a in a weird sort of state right now where it's almost like the world is on pause. Like you're playing a video game and when you play a video game you press the pause button to go take you know, go get a drink or use the bathroom or whatever, take a leak. You come back and play the game. The real world doesn't work that way. You can't just pause the real world. And the real world is not actually paused, but it feels like the world is paused because of this, you know, this outbreak, this uh, you know this uh pandemic and um what i wanted to do is speak to them about this week because last week i did one about you know trying to comfort people let them know we're going to be okay is i want to discuss some lessons that can be learned from this because i feel like this situation maybe not in the extreme long term even though i hope that it is in the extreme long term but in the short term is definitely going to change i feel or should change the way that we look at things in the world the way we treat each other i actually really hope that you know, the only good thing that can come from this, and there's not a lot of good that can come from it at all because of the pain it's causing people, is that it'll at least make some people think, right? And hopefully they're thinking about the right things, and hopefully they're they're thinking about the fact that, you know, this pandemic has no, uh, it has, this actual virus has no prejudice. It doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are, what your political beliefs are. It, it can get you, you know what I mean? It can get you, and you might not have any symptoms, you might have a lot of symptoms, you know, everyone's different, but we're all the same, see, and that's what this kind of virus represents, the fact that we're all different, but we're all kind of the same, and while I don't think that this outbreak is going to change, like, ignorant people who are just going to be the way they are, and just be racist, and just live in, in, in a weird sort of bubble where they think that they're right, this this false moral compass, I, I'm hoping that what it does, it at least teaches us some things about how we should sort of, uh, you know, number one thing, number one, I, I feel like what this has taught me, right? I can't speak for everyone, obviously, but what it's taught me, number one, is it has reassured me that, you know, having an emergency fund, which I was lucky enough to have, is important. You know, I've talked about this before. When you have an emergency fund, you have three to six months of expenses. I actually would go so far as to try to have nine months worth of expenses, but that's a lot harder for people. Um, try. Obviously, if you live paycheck to paycheck, it's not it's not something you can do so easily. But the best thing to do is to try to have some money saved up in case something like this ever happens again, which hopefully it won't, and we have to shut down the economy. You'll have at least some money to help you you know, pay your bills or help you buy food and things like that. You know, uh, that's what this is sort of for, you know. Uh, Obviously, it's not really like when you have an emergency fund, you expect these things to happen. A lot of times, like, you know, the AC breaks, okay, I got money for it. Or my car transmission breaks, okay, I got money for it. Things like that, you know, basic issues that the world gives you. This is more of a bigger issue. One thing I do hope that comes from this, though, is that we learn that, you know, life is very fragile and that you might think that you're, invincible and you might think that you're strong and theoretically human beings do have a pretty strong body i mean we live you know 50 60 70 80 years sometimes more than that you know uh and that's more than a lot of other species on this planet do right uh but it's still very fragile and it just takes one little bug that you can't even see with your own eyes think about that to take that away from you so those are kind of things i think about here when it comes to the effects of this also i'm hoping that this will, you know, mend fences in a lot of ways. You know, people aren't able to see each other, but we take that for granted sometimes. You know, we take things for granted, like being able to go to the store at two in the morning to get to buy milk and avoid the crowds or whatever to buy food. Um, being able to go to the club, being able to go to the beach, being able to go to football games, baseball games, basketball games, wrestling events, MMA. We can't do that right now because everything's getting shut down. Being able to go to the restaurants that we love, we can't do that. And when this is all over with and we're able to go back out in the public and go to restaurants again, I'm definitely going to feel a sense of of appreciation, you know, because it sucks when like a restaurant that you love closes down, right? And you can't go to it, but it sucks now worse because they're not actually closed down, but they might actually end up closing down if the business owner can't afford to pay their rent and or other expenses because of this. You know what I'm saying? It really 
puts things into perspective, you know. And also, I'm hoping that even though this, we're supposed to be apart from each other, I hope it brings people together because, you know, this is the time right now. If you're at home, if you're quarantined, you're just avoiding people, um, you can call up your friends you haven't spoken to in years. You can um, maybe catch up on, on stuff that you haven't been able to catch up on. A lot of it being, you know, interpersonal relationships. We can't see the other person. We can't hug them. We can't hold them, but we can talk to them. And that can also bring us together, you know? You know, I also hope that this whole thing will help us appreciate the sick and the old and take care of them. You know, I uh, I don't have a lot of regrets in the world. I mean, I do have regrets, actually. Let me take that back. I have tons of regrets, but one of the regrets that's really really does hit me, even though it's not my fault... Um, but it is one that I do regret is not spending more time with my parents before they passed away. You know what I mean? I was a lot of times cooped up in my room playing video games when I was younger and maybe I should have spent more time with them. You know what I mean? And when they're gone, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. That's kind of the whole message here. You know, not just with people being gone or being sick, but you know, people, you know, just, uh, and, and just the fact that we can't live a normal life, you know, like we used to. You know, again, it's all a privilege in many ways. We're all kind of spoiled in a way because of technology. Uh, And I think now is the time to appreciate those things. You know, I think now is the time to appreciate those things and learn and definitely learn, you know, um, learn about, like I said, not just saving money, but also thinking about also being a lot more courteous to other people. You know, at this point, point right now we're kind of forced into being courteous you know some parts of the country and the world are a lot worse than others but you know like for me for example I went to go see my doctor last week and he told me that he can't even perform any procedures on me right now because of what's been going on with the lack of of rooms in the hospital and things like that so I have to be patient and I'm okay with being patient you know what I mean and we weren't really planning any major procedures anytime soon but as of right now, it's all being kind of reserved for people who are sick with the virus, you know, and that's fine. Like I'm, I'm okay with being a little bit more patient and waiting, even though my patience has been running thin because I've been sick for a while. It's okay because in this case, it's okay. I, I understand more, you know what I mean? I understand things more. You know, the one thing that sucks for me personally is that, you know, my birthday's coming up in about two weeks, you know, and I was going to have a bunch of friends over, going to go to WrestleMania, and all that stuff's been canceled. Like, you know, people were going to stay at my house for two weeks, a couple of them were, um, and it was going to be a nice little party, you know, with some friends over. It was a nice time, you know, but it's not going to happen because of the flights, people not wanting to fly, you know, and again, these are things you appreciate, you know, I... I flew a lot last year. In the year 2019, I I was on a plane more than I've ever been in my entire life combined. Seriously. Uh, Including the big Japan trip and, you know, my trips to different parts of the country. I went to Georgia. I went to Illinois. um, Went to Texas. You know, I visited a few different states uh, last year. Um, But now it really kind of gives me a sense of appreciation. Like, you know what? Like, man, I miss traveling a little bit. You know, when you get handcuffed into not being able to do something, even if you don't normally do it, you miss it more and want to do it. You know, it's a scarcity effect is what that's called. And this whole thing has kind of created that, you know. And it also makes me kind of worry about people who are, like I said, the sick and the old, but not like necessarily my relatives, but more so other people's relatives as well. You know, especially if they're smokers. And those of you who have been following the Speak Thems for a while and you know the story of how I lost my parents and my brother you know that you know how much I hate smoking like I I despise the act of smoking cigarettes I mean if you're if you're doing medical marijuana or whatever that's different but actual you know traditional cigarettes are just really I have a vendetta against them you know and I it's just the way it is you know but uh one thing too that can be learned from you know, and I'm talking about all the different things that I'm hoping people will learn from this. And there's probably more. If, if you have more, I would love to hear from you and I would love to uh, see what else there is. But, you know, it's also the fact that we, you know, if you're a parent, you know, yet you're spending a lot of time with your kids. It can drive you nuts, but maybe you'll bond with them more. You know, maybe if you're indoors with family, if you're quarantined with children, maybe you'll bond with them more, you know, it, that could be another thing that can be learned as well, or with your parents or with your siblings or whatever, you know, spend time with them. You know, these are precious moments, you know. 
and uh, we should we should make the best of it. The important thing is to make the best of it because, you know, yes, we all want life to go back to normal, but hopefully now we'll be more mindful. And I feel like now, and I'm not going to get political on this because I never do, but uh, I try not to. But uh, I feel like the medical or the way we view the medical system in the world, not in the U.S., in the entire world, I think needs to change. I think now that this has happened, I think the entire world should be more cognizant of the fact that there could be more of these things coming down the pipeline, right? And we need to, I think, and I'm not saying to open up more hospitals. I'm not even talking about that, any specifics, but I think we need to reevaluate the way that we look at healthcare. You know, in the entire world, not just in the U.S., this is not a, a political statement for the U.S., it's just my opinion. Like, we need to reevaluate how we prepare for these things, and we need to be more prepared, I feel, in the future for this stuff to happen. Um, maybe even, you know, nowadays or after this is all over, we should probably stock up on supplies as people. You know, I know that people ran out and bought toilet paper for whatever reason. That's, you know, whatever. But definitely people who don't have hand sanitizer, things like that, maybe now going forward, you know, you'll have a little bit extra in the stock, you know. Um, I would hope so. You know, things like that, you know, to prepare as individuals. We can't control what the government does except when we vote and things of that nature, if you believe in that, if your country even does that. But we can control what we do for sure. And then, you know, your own preparation is important too. Um, but that's pretty much my video. I hope that we appreciate things more going forward. And thank you for listening. And hopefully it, it'll, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, you know. So we'll talk soon.